My name is Giselle Kalenic, and I'm a lead statistician at the University of Michigan's Center for Statistical Consultation and Research. In today's tutorial, I'm going to provide an overview of queries using InVivo. To start, we open our InVivo project. The InVivo project that I currently have open is the sample project called Environmental Change in Down East. Here we see that a number of sources have already been coded on items such as attitude, economy, and the natural environment. Usually we don't code in InVivo, we don't create nodes in InVivo for the sake of coding. Usually we have research questions that we want to answer, and queries can help answer those research questions. To create a query, I start by clicking on the Queries tab in Navigation View, and then I want to be sure that I'm in the Queries folder. In the Queries folder, I see that I don't have any queries, this is because I haven't created any yet. To create a query, it's as simple as right-clicking in the white space in List View. Under New Query, we see a list of the different types of queries we can perform in InVivo. I will have separate tutorials for each of the queries. I'm going to start by selecting a text search query to help demonstrate queries in general in InVivo. All queries in InVivo have a dialog box that looks very similar to this. The first thing I like to do when creating a query is I click on the Add to Project button. When I click on the Add to Project button, a new tab pops up that allows me to provide a name and a description of the query. I'm going to call this query Test Text Search Query number one. It's usually a good idea to also provide a description for your query so you know exactly what you're searching for. Next in InVivo, what we want to do is specify the criteria for our search. We identify what we're looking for and where to find it. Most queries in InVivo have these three items at the bottom, search in, of, and where. Searching in allows me to restrict my search into only text documents, annotations, or both text and annotations. The of line lets us either look within all sources or only selected sources. Where allows us to select only specific users. So if I run a query and leave these at the defaults, InVivo is going to look within all text documents for all types of sources created by any user. If I was only interested in looking within some sources, I could select Selected Items, hit the Select button, and then identify the sources that I'd like to look in. Maybe I'm only interested in restricting my query to interviews. Or maybe if I'm working on a lit review, I may want to restrict my query to only news articles or PDFs. Also, if I'm working on a team, I may be interested in only looking at results for the items that I have coded or that one of my colleagues have coded, or maybe a group of the colleagues that I've worked with. By default, though, InVivo is going to search for anything created or modified by any user. Under Query Options, we see that the default results option is to preview. So what InVivo will do is run the query and just flash the results. Once you close out of the results, they haven't been saved in InVivo, and if you'd like to see them again, you'd have to rerun the query. With a text search query, I often like to create my results as a new node. If I choose to create my results as a new node, the default location for this new node is going to be in the results folder located here. You may want to hit the select button and actually put this new node maybe with your other theme nodes of interest or maybe make it a child node under an existing parent node in the nodes section. The default name for this new node is going to be the same as the name of the query that you're running. You can always change that. And you can always provide a description for the results as well. In this section, 
we have an option of how we want to spread the coding. So by default, InVivo is only going to provide results that match exactly to your search criteria. If I say none, InVivo is not going to spread my coding to surrounding words or phrases or sentences. If I select something like entire source, my search results will be spread over the entire source. We can also specify custom contexts, broad contexts, or narrow contexts. I usually keep these two boxes open for opening the results and create the results if empty. So when I run my query, I want my results to pop up. And if my query results in nothing, if the thing I am searching for does not exist in my project, I still want to see this result window pop up and show me nothing in it. Here, I'm going to search for the word river, just so I can demonstrate how we execute a query in vivo. In my next lesson, I'll cover text search queries in more detail. If I go ahead and select OK after I've added my query to my project, provided it with a name and a description, added my search criteria, decided where I wanted to search, and decided what I want to do with my results, I can go ahead and click OK. Clicking OK will save this query for me to run. This query is saved if I realize that I've made a mistake and I really don't want to look for the word river, but I want to look for the word lake, I could right click and select Query Properties. Here I could change the name of the query, what I'm searching for, where I'm searching for it, and what I'd like to do with my results. To run my query, I can either right click on my query and select Run Query, or I can double click on the query. The bar at the bottom indicates what InVivo is doing. Right now it's saving the query that's being run. And now the results of my query pop up. Notice that I did not spread coding. So when I ran this query, I said none for spread coding. And so InVivo is actually only coding the word river exactly. That's how I've specified my search. If I would have liked InVivo to have spread the coding to this full sentence, I would have had to pick a narrow context. If I close out of my results, I can go to the results folder and then see the results that I've just closed out of. I can double click on it and get them back because I've saved these results. This concludes our tutorial on an overview of InVivo queries. The next tutorials in the series will cover each of the queries that InVivo can run in more detail.